Good morning. Welcome to Logisim Asia Pacific 2021. Shifting supply chains, transforming logistics from concept into reality. Welcome to day two uh, of section one. Today's track will be about AI automation set to thrive in logistics. We will talking about adoption of AI and automation, which has been evident in many sectors and such technology has taken on an accelerated um, drive in the logistics sectors. Discover the key drivers in building success when adopting AI and automation technologies and what are the considerations to take uh, in consideration for the transforming journey. Today, in, with, with, uh, today we have Oliver Tan uh, presenting this topic. He is the director and founder of Oliver Tan Associations. He is the vice chairman for International Alliance of Robotics Associations, an honorary advisor Asia Pacific Assistive, assistive Oper Robotics Associations, and welcome to the presentation. Oliver, over to you. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening to those of you who are on the other side of the globe. Uh, my pleasure to be here with great thanks to the organizers for giving me a chance to share with you some experience and some ideas around the deployment of AI technology, how it dovetails automation, and most importantly, how it can affect your business. Um, perhaps a, a little bit more about myself. My, my passion for AI goes back 30 years. Uh, in fact, one of my first programs that I wrote on AI is on list programming, and uh, it was used to try and understand language, natural language, and mainly English there. Um, over the last three decades, it has not died off. Uh, the technology has advanced very much over uh, these years and uh, with a, a great leapfrog uh, over the last um, number of years. So AI has been talked about very much uh, in recent days. Uh, the, the impact is high and how AI actually um, applies to supply chain and logistic is a very, very interesting discussion. So I'm going to now share my screens and share you my deck uh, as I go through my presentation. There you go. You should be able to see my slide now. So maybe a little bit about APARA, uh, which is a Singapore-based nonprofit organization and what we do. And this is pertinent to the discussion we are having here. Right. Oliver, um, can you change to presentation mode? Presentation mode. So just a quick uh, background to APARA is the Asia Pacific Assistive Robotics Association. We, we focus ourselves in looking at how technology can be used to augment human potential. Right? And that's really our key message. And to do so, we, we look at three aspects of how technologies, particularly AI and robotics, could secure commitment from users to use the technology uh, for those who are struggling with, with the technology, what can we do uh, to help connect to a network of technology providers? And uh, finally, to, to help reduce the stress over the deployment of technology, what are the possible uh, experiences that we can share uh, in the journey of transformation? So having said that, um, I, I love this slide. Right? This, this slide that says, how can AI help you? And that's a question that many of us ask. So this graphic shows you that AI is really helping to free up a lot of our time. But the question is, what do you do with those time um, that you have been freed up for? Um, the question really brings us to think, what really is AI? And, and the trend towards AI. Now, a lot of media will probably start to say, AI is machine learning. You need a lot of data sets. You need to be able to use the data sets and understand the trends and then um, learn. But having said that, really, um, is the data sets enough? Uh, is 10,000 data sets enough? Is 50,000 data sets enough? Now, really, the, the choice of data set, the availability of data set also brings about the question on biasness, right? What you have may not really complete uh, the entire picture of what decision needs to be made. For example, I was talking to a, a HR sourcing company, right? And, and the CEO tells me that they have 50,000 data sets, past records over the last 20 years of uh, candidates that they have placed. And they want to use that to help them deploy AI technology in 
um, selecting candidates and shorten the time. And I told the CEO immediately, hold on, that 50,000 records are based on your success rates. What about those candidates that you offer a job but did not want to take it, they declined it? What about candidates who declined even to start the interview? What about candidates who are not successful for whatever reason are those data captured? So essentially, the data that has been provided may just be a subset of your intelligence, and that is truly the concern. Now, um, the intent of AI, if you look at it from a broader sense, is really look at how it can mimic human intelligence in various ways. And, and here I look at human intelligence in uh, a few aspects, the visual, the audio, speech, the limb movements and touch, as well as eventually looking at the connection. So visual and audio are usually very much input collection of data. And then there's the speech and uh, movements, which gives both input and output. So as you can tell, right, the whole intent of AI covers a lot more than data sets. Data set only supply to the connection in order to generate some rules, some algorithms that can lead to Right, that can lead to eventually the actions that you take uh, that supports human capability. Do we have a choice? Well, um, this slide was supposed to be animated, uh, but do we have a choice? There are reports, and these are three reports that came, has come out over the last six months. Over the last six months, reports are showing that AI in supply chain market is projecting to grow at a tremendous rate over the next five to 10 years. Do we have a choice? Well, honestly speaking, I think we need to start thinking how AI can be deployed in your environment to support you become successful. Well, having said that, AI is, is set to thrive in the logistics space. What are the key considerations? Now, intentionally, you should be looking at how we can build intelligent agents that can support us in a number of ways, including rules that you want to generate, commonly used rules that can apply to probably 80% of your operation, uh, heuristics that gives you the, the charter of probabilistic, um, algorithms, uh, methods that you will have deployed, using robots to eventually automate the process that we have, right, make things a lot faster, machine learning, of course, Right, one part of the whole automation. And if you go deeper into neural networks and deep learning, right, so it encompasses a very broad based uh, uh, co coverage of what is possible with AI. Again, this, this slide is supposed to be automated. So you, you, you probably have some form of automation in one way or another. You probably have already automated some parts of your operation. Adding AI into the whole automation process allows you to start thinking again, what is happening out there? What is possible? What are the different trends and uh, uh, case studies that have started to use AI and how successful they are? You should also ask yourself, what could possibly happen in your environment? Next, what should happen? You as a business owner should make a decision how much you want to automate, whether you want to build, whether AI should be but are they ready off the shelf components that you can use to add on to your current operation instead of building everything from scratch? And most importantly, you must be able to build it into your structured business plan. AI brings to you four very key elements. One, it gives the data collected can be presented and give you visibility of your operation. It's able to, based on rules that you set, give you alerts from what's happening, especially the exceptions. And all this come together should be able to support your decision making. And most importantly, the ultimate aim is that parts of the operation could be automated, fully autonomous to the extent whereby it helps with productivity and business process effectiveness. So three things to look at, right? What's possible, what's working, and this is key, do not Think about technology for the sake of technology, understand what's working, and then figure out what you should do, what, uh, how and what you can include into your overall plan that fits into um, the strategy that you want to adopt. Talk to people, understand the trends, and figure out what is possible, 
how can we then build that into your operation? Now, there are lots of statistics out there. Now, this is the one I picked up from McKinsey, right? Uh, as of 2016, that's uh, five years ago, already AI is seen to build and break through in many, many areas. You, you could say, hey, Oliver, that's, that's you know five years ago, what's the latest stats? So let me show you another set of stats that suggest that over the next um, six years, right? 20, uh, 21 to 2017, 27, right? The adoption of AI in supply chain market is going to grow multiple fold. Multiple fold, right? Whether it's in the software, services, or hardware. If you want to go even deeper, right, you want to go deeper, specifically in terms of machine learning, natural language, uh, computer vision, um, and uh, context aware computing, there are so much more that is made possible. And this is the projection given. Um, which we should really consider, which means the market, the industry out there is moving. Back to the question, do we have a choice? Well, seriously, let's think uh, deeper into what can be done. Now, you should really ask yourself the question in terms of how AI is going to affect you in your operation, right? And if these four questions are diligently answered and you do, do see a yes in all these questions that things are definitely affecting you, then you should really think about how your path uh, should be adjusted accordingly to adopt AI. Where can AI be ap applied in logistics? Well, this is just a list. It is not comprehensive uh, and exhaustive, which means that really AI and robotics, uh, as well as automation, can be combined in multiple ways right, in your operation to support uh, efficiency. So this is a nice little example all right, uh, of how AI uh, and automation can continue to upgrade your current operation from the factory all the way to the end user, the customer uh, that's receiving uh, the product. Right? At, at each point in the whole cycle, in the whole supply chain cycle, AI and automation can be automated. Of course, automation currently can be limited to the factory and warehouse space. But as the product is being tracked across the entire cycle, AI can be applied to supplement the automation that you currently have and help your operation move to the next level. I'm gonna look at what is possible. And I guess it brings us to the question whereby, hey, will AI eventually be able to exceed human performance? Now, this slide is to be automated. Um, uh, Professor Melanie, Professor Melanie uh, Michelle, uh, I beg your pardon on this. Let me but Professor Melanie Michelle from Portland University in uh, Santa Fe uh, Institute actually wrote a paper about two weeks ago where she proposed that AI is harder than we think. It is really harder than we think. It is not just something you can buy off the shelf uh, in, in its completeness and, and deploy into your operation. And she suggested a number of uh, fallacies. One, um, the thought, the thinking that narrow intelligence is on a continuum with general intelligence. Uh, this is a myth. This is definitely not really true. And uh, to support that, she suggested a second fallacy. And that is, we always think easy things are easy and hard things are hard. On the contrary, easy things are intuitive. For example, um, Picking up a spoon of rice and eating it is intuitive to many of us, easy to do, but trying to get a robot, trying to get AI to understand how that works is not that easy, right? So really, uh, there's a lot more to it than what easy things uh, can be done easily. The third is the Leo of wishful mnemonics. Now, um, I, I think we have created a, very, a lot of very nice names, right? Um, from data science to machine learning to natural language, uh, we should ask ourselves, how would a machine really learn? A machine operates based on zeros and ones, right down to the basic level. To translate zeros and ones eventually into a level of intelligence means there's a lot more, there's a lot more that we need to deal with. Of course, technology is moving fast and further, uh, but still, 
it is not as easy as it seems. Um, the fourth suggestion that she came up with, intelligence is not only in the brains. There are really instincts, behavior instincts that can take place at the age. And this itself will bring about a certain level of intelligence. Hence, intelligent age systems are starting to take place around the world. So I just want to kind of close this discussion here around the performance of AI um, to the understanding that AI is a lot broader and data science, uh, data analytics is just one part, one small part of the entire uh, thinking. It is then very important, we must be able to differentiate between the needs that you have and the hype that's out there in the industry. Okay. It is difficult to contain, but it is up to your IT manager, your CIO, um, CTO, whatever you call it, to understand the industry, the technological trends, and particularly to help the CEO, the business owner, understand this and where AI can really make an impact and help with the whole operation. Now, this is very critical because the, the role of the CIO right, is not just simply to manage costs and then automate the business process. With AI and the more advanced technology, the CIO must be able to deploy systems that are transformative, that will affect business decision, that will improve customer-facing experiences, and to help create value and revenue. It is also important to understand that the whole process of transformation is probably 5%, maybe give it 10, right? Uh, digital technology and a lot of emphasis on human behavior. You can put in the best technology, but if the workforce do not understand how to use the technology, how to best leverage the technology, um, there will be letdowns, there will be mismatch expectations. So the whole digital transformation centers around how well the culture can adopt the technology. I'll just so one aspect of uh, the trend that's really moving very fast is the area of robot process automation, and I, I call upon all of you to take a hard look at robot process automation, right? Uh, at our booth uh, um, in the exhibition hall uh, by Apara, we showcase one of the possible use of robot process automation in the logistics space. Now, this is a very busy slide. Uh, this is from DHL, right, on how they have actually automated and added AI into the entire operation. I won't go through the details, but it is really possible. It is possible because this is where um, an entire operation have adopted uh, a maximum automation and the use of AI to support them all the way through. Well, and you may say, hey, that's because DHL is a big company, deep pockets, and they can do a lot more. Well, honestly, you can go down to even a smaller level of automation and use of AI. This is another example by a company where you simply use AI computer vision to detect products and to understand if you have empty space on a shelf or perhaps even um, the need to restock. So very point focus and uh, it can be easily adopted. The question that we probably have to ask ourselves is what do you want to do uh, in automating your process. Uh, the next case example is really around robot process uh, automation. And this gives you the details of every part of how documents could easily be captured, uh, interface into your legacy system, and then be used as certain intelligence uh, to support your decision making. Um, this is another example from uh, Israel, uh, SLED, where they actually adopt a lot of AI technology to support the logistic process. Uh, again, um, some information about SLED as well as uh, Climatic is available on our exhibition booth uh, in the hall. So I'm going to leave you with this particular slide. I'm going to leave you this particular slide and then I'll leave the next five to ten minutes for question and answer. While we all spend time in the planning room, talking about what is possible, talking about you know the, the legal aspects, talking about the different plans, uh, worrying about big names and words, um, wondering who's going to get paid, where the expertise. My new business owners, your folks out there are doing all the hard labor. 
they're all carrying the crates and moving things, right? So we need to think fast, assess quickly, and make a decision that can help you and your business um, right the current uh, situation and become successful. AI and automation is here to support you. I've shared with you a number of case studies. I've shared with you the background of AI and how you can dovetail your automation process and uh, the different considerations. The, the key thing to think about is where do you want to start? Do you buy or build? Um, there are probably available off-the-shelf tools and products that you can quickly adapt and uh, integrate into your current system. Or do you want to take an overall holistic transformation of your organization and do a build of the solution? So with that note, I'll, I'll probably end my presentation here. Uh, my contact, Oliver at para.asia, that's the association, or my personal contact would be Oliver at oliverdinassociates.com. Right. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, over to you, Marcus. Well, we will thank you very much for that um, interactive presentation. Um, again, we will uh, make sure that this uh, presentation is made available offline uh, afterwards. And uh, again, apologies for the, the technical glitch. Yeah, despite we are in AI and automation, <laughs> we, we see that sometimes coming up. Um, a question I'm, I'm having: You said it in the last in, in, in the in your closing that. Um, where does the journey start? What is from a looking at manufacturing perspective, where do you normally see where most companies or is there somewhere uh, where most companies would start the journey? Would, where does it normally engage in the first place? Um, I, I will look at it uh, from the companies themselves. Where do they want to start? If you are a large operation like DHL, where you probably cover a bigger cycle, then you may have to figure out which part of that cycle is most critical to you and which part uh, is where there's a greatest opportunity for you to tap on the technology. Yeah. Now, on the other hand, if you are part a player that supports that entire supply chain, then look at what you can achieve, right? So falling back onto the examples I gave, um, DHL is a large operation that can look at more an entire and holistic solution. Whereas if you are focused on just replenishing or just looking at uh, the support of inventory, um, then the simple computer vision solution uh, will be where you want to start. So it really depends on the business. It really depends on uh, what impacts you. And go back to the four questions that I, I listed out earlier, right? And, and how that would eventually uh, affect you and if the answers to all the four questions are yes, there is a shift, then you really need to start thinking. All right, um, and maybe a, a little bit of more, more critical question. Where do you normally see the bottlenecks or the red tapes in organizations? I know we all we all confronted in my role, myself, um, in our organization, in our customer side, um, but from a consultative perspective, where have you seen where, where roadblocks are coming ahead and what can be done to to erase them is it more technically or is it more on the human nature side um i, I will look at it from from two aspects uh, in regards to this question right one is where does it hurt most within the organization where do you see uh, are the areas which brings you the biggest problem that you're facing today that's hurting your business people is definitely one aspect upskilling uh, your workforce to understand technology to understand what they're going to be using is so key and important now what one of the uh, criticism i have of the current education system is that we send somebody to a warehouse uh, workshop a warehousing operation workshop we, and we expect the person to come back and be an expert to to revamp the entire operations within uh, our organization now that is uh, in my view a misnomer what is more important is the periodic update of technology and tools that can support you to improve on the process within the operation. So an ongoing uh, learning set of activities is probably more important than a one-off five-day workshop uh, that's done every two years. So, so people uh, is critical. That's probably the biggest roadblock. In fact, when I... Um, uh, deploy robots and AI into, for example, an F&B space, right? The fear 
the fear of losing the job is so high that um, uh, the, the workforce could potentially think of ideas to sabotage the implementation. Uh, and if the, the business owners, the, the managers are not uh, involved, uh, they may flag it out based on the report that says that um, the, the, the solution is not working. And that is going to be disappointing for both the technology as well as the workforce in terms of improving uh, their process. All right, thank, thank you very much, Oliver. I appreciate that, that input um, to the audience. Um, I think we're a little bit ahead of time, um, but this also leaves us to uh, prepare for the next um, uh, panel round. Um, thank you very much again for the uh, presentation. This was Oliver Tian, uh, director and founder of Oliver Tian Associations, uh, with the topic AI and automation uh, set to thrive in logistics. I will close the session now and I wish everybody a uh, happy day. Please stay tuned. Uh, we're following up with a panel discussion um, and the novelty on today perhaps, but the necessity, necessity for tomorrow. Um, and this will be also led by Oliver Tian. And I'm looking forward to that session too. Thank you and uh, goodbye. Yeah, see you in a few minutes in the next room. And uh, we can have a good discussion from a panel of experts who will share with you real life example, real life experience on the deployment of AI and robotics uh, in the automation of your operation. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Bye.